Have you ever wondered if a high-protein diet really damages your kidneys? It's a common question and it's time we debunk this myth. The belief that protein, particularly animal protein, is harmful to your kidneys, originated from research conducted on rats, not humans. That's right, this theory is based on studies done on rodents, not on us, the two-legged, upright walking creatures. Let's delve deeper into this. You see, the kidneys are vital organs that filter waste products from the blood. In a healthy individual, proteins are too large to pass through these filters. However, if the kidneys are damaged, they may begin to leak protein into the urine, a condition known as proteinuria. This is where a lot of the confusion lies. It's not that protein damages the kidneys, but rather, damaged kidneys can leak protein. Unfortunately, despite the lack of scientific support, some physicians continue to uphold the myth that protein harms the kidneys. It's a misconception that has been perpetuated in the medical community and has trickled down to the general public, causing unnecessary fear and confusion. So, what about those who follow a high-protein diet, like the carnivore diet? Well, contrary to what the myth suggests, these individuals do not typically experience kidney issues. In fact, there have been cases where chronic kidney dysfunction has improved following this diet. Now, it's crucial to remember that every body is unique, and what works for one may not work for another, so always consult with a healthcare professional before making any drastic changes to your diet. So, it turns out that high-protein diets like the carnivore diet do not typically cause kidney issues. But what about real-world evidence? What do historical accounts and population studies tell us? Well, let's dive into that. When we look at our human past, we find that many societies have thrived on diets rich in animal protein. From the Inuit of the Arctic to the Maasai of East Africa, these populations have been known to consume large amounts of meat, often as the primary component of their diet. Now, you might expect that these meat-heavy diets would have led to widespread kidney problems or outbreaks of gout, right? But the historical record tells a different story. In fact, these issues were hardly seen in these societies. Take the Inuit, for instance. Their traditional diet is primarily made up of seal, fish, and other marine mammals, very high in protein. Yet, kidney issues were not a common health problem among them. Similarly, the Maasai, a group who breeds and takes care of animals and whose diet is heavily reliant on the cattle they herd, also did not display prevalent kidney diseases. This absence of kidney problems in such meat-rich diets provides compelling evidence against the theory that protein, specifically animal protein, damages the kidneys. It seems that our bodies are quite capable of handling high protein intake without dire consequences for our kidneys. Now let's talk about gout. Conventionally, gout has been associated with diets high in meat due to the presence of purines, but again our historical evidence doesn't support this. These meat-eating societies did not have high incidences of gout either. There's a growing body of evidence suggesting that gout is more closely linked with factors like inflammation, hyperinsulinemia, fructose consumption, and alcohol intake. But we'll delve more into that in the next scenes. So, what's the takeaway from these historical observations? It's clear that diets high in animal protein do not inherently lead to kidney problems or gout. History shows us that societies consuming large amounts of meat did not have prevalent kidney issues. So, if meat doesn't damage kidneys, what about gout? Is there a connection there? Well, let's dive right into it. The link between meat and gout is a long-standing misconception. Historically, gout was often referred to as the disease of kings or the rich man's disease. Why? Because gout was typically seen in wealthy individuals who had access to a diet rich in sugar and alcohol, luxuries that the masses couldn't afford. Over time, this association between wealth, meat consumption, and gout took root, leading to the common belief that meat causes gout. However, it's not that simple. Gout is a form of arthritis caused by an excess of uric acid in the bloodstream. Uric acid is a waste product produced when the body breaks down substances called purines, which are found in many foods, including meat. But here's where the plot thickens. High uric acid levels do not always lead to gout. That's right, you can have high uric acid levels without ever developing gout. You're probably wondering, if not meat, then what causes gout? Well, while pure reens in meat can contribute to increased uric acid production, they aren't the sole villains in the gout saga. Other factors such as inflammation, hyperinsulinemia, fructose consumption, and alcohol consumption can all contribute to the development of gout. 
So while it's true that a diet high in pure rain-rich foods like meat can contribute to higher uric acid levels, it's not the meat per se that's causing gout, it's a more complex interplay of diet, lifestyle, and genetic factors that leads to this painful condition. In conclusion, the connection between meat and gout is not as straightforward as it seems. It's a tangled web of misconceptions and half-truths that has led to an oversimplified understanding of this complex condition. As we continue to learn more about gout and its causes, it's crucial to question these long-held beliefs and strive for a more nuanced understanding of our health and diet. If not meat, then what does contribute to the development of gout? It's a question that's been asked over and over again, and the answers might surprise you. While meat, especially red meat, has been blamed for causing gout, there are other factors at play that can contribute to the development of this painful condition. First, let's talk about inflammation. Inflammation is part of the body's natural defense mechanism. However, when it gets out of control, it can lead to various health issues, including gout. Inflamed tissues produce more uric acid, a waste product that can crystallize and cause gout when it accumulates in the joints. Next on the list is hyperinsulinemia, a condition characterized by high levels of insulin in the blood. This can lower the body's ability to excrete uric acid leading to its accumulation and, you guessed it, gout. Now let's talk about fructose. This natural sugar found in fruits, honey, and high fructose corn syrup can increase uric acid levels in the body. Fructose is metabolized in the liver, where it can lead to an overproduction of uric acid, which can then build up in the joints and trigger a gout attack. And finally, we can't forget about alcohol. Excessive alcohol consumption, particularly beer and spirits, has been linked to higher levels of uric acid. Alcohol interferes with the removal of uric acid from the body, causing it to build up and potentially lead to gout. So, as you can see, the development of gout is influenced by a variety of factors, not just meat consumption. It's a complex interplay of diet, lifestyle, and genetic factors that can lead to this painful condition. It's clear that gout is caused by a variety of factors, not just meat consumption. By understanding these factors, we can better manage and potentially prevent gout, leading to a healthier, pain-free life. What happens to individuals with gout who transition to a ketogenic or carnivore diet? Now, this is a question that often pops up. The answer is quite intriguing. When initially switching to a meat-based diet, there may be a temporary flare-up of gout in individuals who already have this condition. This might seem alarming, but it's important to understand that it's just your body adjusting to the new regime. In fact, many find that these symptoms generally subside after they have fully transitioned to a meat-based diet. It's like moving to a new city. There's an initial period of adjustment and discomfort, but slowly you find your rhythm and start to feel at home. Similarly, your body needs time to adjust to a new diet, especially one as radical as the carnivore diet. It's important to stay the course, monitor your symptoms, and consult with a healthcare professional if required. Transitioning to a meat-based diet may cause temporary discomfort, but it's not a permanent issue. So, don't let this initial discomfort deter you from exploring the potential benefits of a meat-based diet. So, where does this leave us on the protein kidney damage and meat gout myths? We've journeyed through the misconceptions, tracing back to the origins of these myths, and what we've found is enlightening. Protein, particularly from animal sources, doesn't damage the kidneys. Damaged kidneys can leak protein, which has led to some of the confusion. As for gout, it's not solely caused by meat consumption. Factors such as inflammation, hyperinsulinemia, fructose, and alcohol are significant contributors. Keep in mind, these findings aren't a one-size-fits-all solution. Individuals with impaired kidney function due to medications, for instance, may need to approach dietary changes differently. It's crucial to consult with healthcare professionals for personalized advice. Remember, health is a personal journey. Consult with a healthcare professional to find what works best for you. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Remedy Seeker. See you in the next video.